Hey guys, Dan Takashi here. Bonds. What the heck is a bond? Why should you even invest in bonds? I've been getting a lot of questions about this, especially because right now, there's a lot of government bonds right now that it's called negative yield. Today, I'm going to try to answer all these questions in about 10 minutes or so. Let's see if I can do it. For those of you new viewers and subscribers, my name is Dan Takashi. I'm a former Wall Street guy. I've been uh, investing almost all my money since I was 12. Uh, I created my own fund with a partner when I was 26, sold my stake in that fund when I was 30, then traveled the world, about 60 different countries, and then came back to Tokyo, end of 2019, so about seven, eight months ago. Uh, Tokyo is where I was born. I'm half Japanese. Just started YouTube. I uh, got about 300,000 followers between YouTube and Twitter, LinkedIn. Very, very thankful. Just started this English channel actually less than a month ago, so hopefully you'll subscribe. Uh, pressing on the button below. Today, I want to break down today's topic in three main things. Number one, what the heck is a bond? Number two, talk about what's going on right now in the world of bonds. What's the good general trend? And number three, what do I recommend and why do I recommend you invest in bonds for your long term portfolio? So, first and foremost, what is a bond? You've probably heard about this a lot. A bond is a tie between two people. A bond is, uh, uh, you know, when you owe money to somebody. It's very simple, guys. A bond is an IOU. You can look this up on Wikipedia. You can look this up on anybody. A bond, it's called a financial instrument of indebtedness to the bond issue of holders. Very, very simple, guys. One person lends money to another person. Let's say it's $100. This person agrees to pay back that $100 in one year. But in return for lending the money, he has to pay back $101. So the interest payment, interest coupon rate is 1%. This is the most basic type of bond. Now, these two parties are in an IOU, a bond contract. Now, sometimes, the borrower, the person who's borrowing, it could be a person, it could be a company, corporate bonds, it could be a country, usually called sovereign bonds or treasury bonds, depending on the country. So many, many, many different types. But all bonds in the world have some common characteristics. Number one, all bonds have what's called the principal. The principal is how much you borrowed in the first place. In that example that I just showed, $100. This is the principle. Very, very simple. Then we talk maturity. Maturity, again, is the time frame. You lend $100 to this person, he has to pay it back over one year. The maturity is one year. Very simple. Next, the coupon. This is where there's a lot of confusion between the coupon rate and the yield. The coupon is, in that example I just showed, 1%. You have to pay back. 1% after one year, in one year. Now the yield is different because this person has to pay back this person, right? $101. However, this person now has a contract that says, okay, I have the right to receive $100 from this person in one year, $101. This person could go sell this contract to somebody else for a different price. Maybe not $100, maybe not one one maybe 105 to make a little bit of money. When you sell to a different person, there's a new price. And this person has to return the money here, and then it goes to the new person. The new price here is going to be a different price. And therefore, the $1 interest payment originally from here, you have to divide it by the new price to get what's called the yield. Guys, if you feel confused on this, please try to review that video I just went over or just look this up very, very easily on Wikipedia or any Investopedia. It's the annual interest payment divided by the current price or the clean price. So the new price, whatever it is, divided by the annual interest payment divided by the current price is the yield. The price changes. This is why the yield changes. If the price doesn't change, then 
the yield and the coupon, these are the exact same. This is the very basic of bonds. Now, second part of this video. What's going on right now in the world of bonds? There's many different types of bonds, but today I want to focus on government bonds. I talk about corporate bonds, municipal bonds, tons of different types of bonds, government bonds. Government bond is when the government borrows money and the government has to pay it back. Now, looking at the government bonds around the world here, we see different types of yields. The most common maturity, just talked about maturity is the word, is the 10 year yield. Every bond in the world from each country is rated, it's given a rating depending on how often they pay back. Most developed countries have good ratings. Emerging markets that have not had a history of paying back on time, they don't have as good ratings. The yield changes depending on the price. Now you see here, there's at least 10 to 20 countries that have negative yield, especially in Europe. Japan is close for the 10 year, but not quite. You might ask yourself, what the heck's going on? Why are people loaning money to these countries at negative yield? They have to pay money to loan. It's craziness. Why would you loan money to somebody and you have to pay to loan money? Absolutely craziness. But it's going on mainly because the price is going up. And the price is going up because central banks around the world are buying these bonds. The central banks are buying bonds. The country. The government, I've talked about this before, the government will issue bonds. They need money, right? So they issue bonds. They need to borrow money. And the central bank has been buying the country's bonds. A lot of countries are doing this. As a result, we're seeing this happening in a lot of different countries right now. And especially countries like Japan, they've been buying, you see the BOJ is this orange line, huge amount of bonds relative to the percentage of GDP humongous, much bigger than the Fed in the US or BOE in England or ECB in Europe. As a result, the prices have been moving up. This is how you get negative interest rates. When the central banks are manipulating the price, creating negative interest rates, usually nobody with their right mind will be buying negative, but the central banks are buying so much, which in turn forces other institutions like insurance companies, retirement funds, they have to buy bonds because they owe money to people when they retire. All of this is creating negative yields right now. Last part of this video, why should you even buy these bonds? What's the point? Why am I recommending this in each one of your portfolios? Guys, just as a uh, quick review, I recommend you divide your investment into long-term and short-term. Long-term, 70 to 90%. Short-term, 30 to 10%. In the long term, this is for your retirement or if you need the money as an emergency. Every month, I recommend you put some money into a long term investment and you divide it up according to ratios below. The red region, I recommend you put in government bonds, especially places like the US or Germany, sometimes even Japan, it depends. Why? Because it's safe. It's historically safe. As in, when the rest of the world is crashing, Sometimes these prices go up. Let's look at an example here. During the coronavirus crash, we see, for example, let's look at the US market, the S&P 500 index. The S&P 500 index during the coronavirus crash, I'm sure everybody knows, it tanked about over 30% starting from end of February. Then it has recovered recently. But this is a crazy crash here. I've been trading for a long time. I have not seen something like this. As far as I can remember, uh, even in my professional career of 12 years, where the market crashes by over 30% in one month is unheard of, even during the, during the great financial crisis. During times like this, you want some safety assets because everything is falling, right? In that portfolio I just mentioned, all these things, most of these prices are falling. Even the commodities, most of these prices are falling. Even gold considered a safe haven asset. But government bonds, they don't fall as much. Government bonds, you can look at basically the futures if you want, but uh, usually depending on the maturity, 
government bonds sometimes will even go up in price. So looking at government bonds, I'll look at uh, the futures market here, the government bonds. So let's say the US market, the futures market. This is the 30 year futures market ZB1 on TradingView. It went up since the end of February. Yes, it tanked a little bit here, but then it continued to go up. If you look at 10 years, very similar chart, hard chatter. We look at five year maturity, straight up, almost very little decline here. Two year, almost zero decline. You notice as the maturity gets shorter, the declines were smaller. Why? Because as the maturity gets shorter, it's closer to cash, it's more safe. So as a result, I recommend you put some money into different maturities because the safer is, of course, the shorter term but you're gonna get very little yield or almost nothing. Longer term, like 30 years, you're gonna get some yield, but it's not as safe because it's farther away. You don't get your money back for a long time. Now, the way that I recommend you do this is you don't need to actually go buy physical bonds. You could just use ETFs. And the ETFs that I recommend are these four right here. SHV is for very, very short term. This is one of the largest ETFs in the world. And this gives you exposure to very short-term assets, less than one year, often called commercial paper or notes. Commercial paper. This barely moves. It actually goes up during a crisis, as we could see here on the chart. SHY is maturities between one and five years. This also went almost straight up during the coronavirus crash. IEF, we're talking about seven to, uh, five to seven-year maturities. Seeing that a little bit of a downturn here, but still going straight up. And TLT is for 20 years and more. These are all ETFs. They all have some sort of yield, just a little bit, but the yield usually goes up the longer the maturity. And the longer the maturity, usually it means it's not quite as safe. So keep all of this in mind, guys. Uh, there are different types of bond ETFs, there's lots of them. I recommend the most the government bonds for US because they're considered safe and they're quite liquid and they still pay you a little bit of yield uh, i would recommend avoiding these uh, negative yielding countries just because you don't get paid anything sometimes you actually have to pay there's a cost involved so u.s markets there's at least you get some sort of reward and it's a safe asset i recommend you put it into your long-term portfolio here thanks so much for watching guys please uh Follow my video below, and if you would uh, help me out and send you my channel link to any of your buddies and friends, I would very much appreciate it. Thanks so much, guys, and have a great day.